My name is Mary Ann Darlington, and I'm the vice president of the Friends Group here at the uh, Bucks County Historical Society. I would like to welcome everyone here today. And I notice we have three men in the audience. That's wonderful to see three men. Uh, the first session, we found one man hiding in the back. Uh, but anyway, um, welcome to everyone today. And I want to point out also, we have a longtime member here of the Historical Society, a native of Doylestown, and a, an icon, I think, in the uh, history of the town and the uh, contribution she gives to a lot of organizations here. And it's so nice to see her today. I was thinking about you this morning. I was hoping I'd see you today. Uh, Jean Rutherford in the first, the first row. So happy to see you. So happy to be here. <laughs> and I like your hat. Very, it matches your outfit. <laughs> well, uh, I want to give a little plug to the Friends Group. Um, it's been around for years. We're the fundraising arm of the Bucks County Historical Society. So uh, the Friends Group is... Um, an organization that we have a treasury and we collect money and uh, we from these fundraising events and you probably say what do we do what do we do with it well we help the museum out with large purchases hundreds sometimes thousands of dollars uh, it's curatorial it's the library uh, the, the museum itself, its staff uh, wish lists, and that uh, they give us uh, once a year a wish list with all the uh, item that they desire behind the scenes to get our exhibits ready. The staff needs certain things, the library. They give us a wish list. We look at it and decide how much money we have in the treasury. And, uh, and then we go over it, and most of the time, we at least we fund over half of the wish list, which we're very happy to do. The more we can promote the museum worldwide, locally, uh, we're very happy to do that, and uh, that's why we're here today. And I want to introduce Lisa Crawford, who is going to introduce Lynn Ann Donchez. Uh, Lisa is our co-chairwoman of our program committee. She and Nancy Bergier get together and make a lot of phone calls and get these speakers lined up. It takes a lot of work, and they're good volunteers that do that. They're, they're uh, excellent at what they do. So without further ado, I'll introduce Lisa Crawford, and she will introduce Lynn Ann. Thank you for being here. Well, welcome everyone. It is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker. Now, you are likely to know or at least recognize this lovely lady. Lynn Ann Donchez is a native of Doylestown. She is a longtime supporter of the Mercer Museum, town and country players, and many other community organizations. Additionally, she is well known for her sense of fashion and as a true connoisseur of hats. Ms. Donchez has a collection of approximately 175 hats and 50 hats boxes. It is our honor to have her share some of them with us today. And now I give you Miss Lynn Donchez. Hi, everyone. I am really, really pleased to see everybody here. I thank the gentleman for coming. And you know what? It is such a pleasure to speak to everybody about hats. You have to remember something. 
hats are a smile. When you have a hat on, people can approach you because they have something to say, and it makes them smile. I smile when I wear a hat, they smile when they look at you. So it's all about what you can do for other people. So today, starting without any, any more ado, I just want to take this one off. Now the story on this hat is never leave me and say, can you meet me later somewhere? You can either find me at a bookstore or where they sell cards because I'm a cardaholic and I also go to bookstores. But yeah, I just happened to be in San Francisco with friends. They were having cocktails. I couldn't drink anymore. So I went out to the wharf and I bought that hat. I can't help it. It just called to me. So one of the oldest hats in my collection was given to me by a friend of mine, my best friend from high school, who was an airline stewardess. This is a black Persian lamb with real, these are real feathers. This is the 19th century. This is the oldest hat in my collection, and it was given to me. Now I'm going to turn this way, and it's put on, and this little is supposed to come down like this and over, over your bun. I'm wearing a, a ballet bun today. And here is, here's a, this came with the muff. I love muffs. Doesn't everybody? And it comes as, you put your little hand in here and you hold it. And of course these were ladies that went out. And there's no purse inside of here because those ladies didn't pay for anything. <laughs> what has happened to this world? So one I wanted to tell you was, this is the oldest hat, and then we went through the, the time period where things, they were more elaborate, they got very, they went through time periods where they wore cloches. But before we go any further, Monica, give us a little spring, please. And I'm afraid if her husband was here, he would be singing in your Easter bonnet. And that is such an Easter bonnet, my dear. And it's the trimmings. I will go into the trimmings of these hats. Years ago, especially when we approached the 30s and the 40s, going to the 30s, they had a tax, 33% on hats at, because they wanted, because of the war. And they didn't trim hats. They took their hats and they just trimmed them lightly. This one, I'm gonna put this one on for you. And this is nice and big. And what I should have done, I'm so sorry, I forgot my trick. What happens when you forget a trick? You do it over. Okay, you put on a pair of sunglasses just like this. A friend of mine from Town and Country Players taught me this trick. Just saying. All right, and it goes like this. It holds it up. And it's a wonderful bounce right in here. And it gives, this is your sun hat. Maybe a little bit of an Easter bonnet. It doesn't quite qualify for that. But this hat frame, I will refer to Bonton. Now we all miss Bonton, don't we? Okay, well, this, I got this hat in Bonton and um, I, I trimmed it. When you buy a hat, and then you, tr you say you trim it. But that's where we go back to, it was, now I'm gonna check, I gotta check my notes here, because I wanted to make sure, yes, all right, it is the 19, in the 1930s, they had 33% tax on any trims and on all hats, so they did not buy them, they took old hats and remodeled them. And that's where some of our hats and, our, and um, the, the women who run the hatteries, they would you come in and they would say, free trim, because they wanted you to bring your hat back, they would trim them free, and then you'd see another hat. It's just like, do you ever go to an ice cream parlor? And you say, mmm, that looks really good. I'll take one scoop of that and one scoop of this. So there you go. Miss Monica, come on out. That's right. Lit Brothers, as I'm sure many of you remember in Philadelphia, used to have that very sign trimmed for free. So they would get you into the store to buy more. Smart marketing. <laughs> so
So she, really, the fabric that that hat, that hat is made on, that one came, I really can't tell you where it came from, but I trimmed that hat myself, and that is a transitional. Now, I'm skipping around a little bit, but that's the way I am, so get used to it. Now, this is, this hat is a, um, this is also a transi transitional. It is not wool, and it's not cotton, it is, it is made, this is like, almost like a paper. Now, the reason I have this hat, there you go, is because my friend, Jean Rutherford, I said, I said to Jean, are you gonna be at the uh, designer house? And she said, no, I can't do it anymore. I said, okay, Jean, I'll take your place upstairs and show everybody the rooms. Well, there just happened to be a little hat shop right there and they were selling hats, <laughs> it's all her fault. <laughs> And this is much too big for her to wear, but this is a transitional also. I kind of like it. I like the puff in the back. And it's, you know what? Remember, you never drag the season behind you. If it's spring, wear spring clothes. Don't drag your winter clothes. You need a wool sweater? Get a pastel one. And every season goes like this. This right here is, um, this is a good um, transitional hat. And Monica, how about we show them another one? Here comes a transitional. Monica loves that hat, I love it too, but you never ever see, we will, you never see us wearing this a long time. It is so heavy, you it's have a no lot of idea. Hat. It's a lot of hat. You know you're wearing a hat. <laughs> I'm gonna put another transitional on here for you. It's thick, it's a thick straw, it's heavily, heavily adorned yeah. with the okay. flat. And so those, you, you just, you're, you're very aware of it. <laughs> you're wearing a hat. And this one, of course, this one is your basic, your basic um, <clears throat> taupe with black. It goes with everything. You can travel with it. People say to me, do I travel with hats? Absolutely. One on my head and at least three in, the, in my, pulley, my pulley, but uh, I get to the airport and they say, Madam, you're bl everything's blinking. Why are you setting off the alarms? And you know what it is? Mm. Because when I put my bun in, I forgot to put plastic pins in and I had metal uh, bobby pins or grippers in them. So I have to take my hat off. You gotta take your shoes off. I'm like, what next? All right, and Miss Monica, could you do me a favor? Would you, would you put this cloche on? Because we're going to, this is a transitional. Do you want to do this for me? I sure can. Thank you. Here, let me dance in front of you. How rude am I to her? Ta-da. There you go. This looks very much um, like one of the hats that are in the film. This is a transitional. This goes from winter into spring, and it can float you into fall. Now, going to that, there's, um, there's hat etiquette. Now, does anybody have head, hat etiquette? I don't know. But the larger the brim, the earlier the day. The smaller the brim, the later in the day. And you never wear a fascinator. You never wear a fascinator in the evening after dinner to dance. You're going to dance? No fascinator. And you put a... Um, the last time I did something, I had my twist in, and I had pearls and rhinestones up the back of my twist. It's just what you do. But really, do we care anymore? Are you going to have a good time? Monica's going to come out with a few fascinators on, and I'm going to leave this hat on. I just want to tell you one thing. In 1970, the Broadway icon, Stephanie St um, Stephen Stamheim, begged the question, does anyone wear a hat. And from his award-winning musical company, which my sister directed, she's sitting back right back there, um, we ask the same question, does anybody wear a hat? Well, I want to tell you something. Every time I go to something, they have a musical review, they say, they'll go through this, does anyone wear a hat? And I want to yell, yes, I'm back here in the back row, okay? So um, we do wear hats, and what are they for? Hats started way back when to cover your head for the sun, cover your head for the wind. Men wore hats to protect their hair. They wore hats because that's what they did. 
our men's selection over here. I have some over there, and I hope you'll look at them before you go. They were loaned to me from Town & Country Players. Also, there's a very little pork pie on this, end of the, on this end of the table. My two sisters are here, that's our father's, and my cousin's here, that's her, her favorite uncle. I just want you to know it is her favorite uncle. And he, um, that was his hat, and then I gave him to Bruce, one of my favorite friends, and he wore it, and then I have Bruce's top hat, back there, so we're all, we're um, saluting them today. So Miss, oh look at this, we have a little fascinator. Fascinators came into existence in the late uh, 1800s, which you did not know, and then went into, um, they dropped off in the 70s, and they came back in with the royals. And all kinds of hats. There's a real crossover. What's a hat? What's a fascinator? So there's a fascinator for that and Miss Monica is going to do this and I'm going to put a fascinator slash hat on for you. I just love that. I'll switch out. Fascinators are very easy, very easy to wear. Okay, there you go. And I'm going to make one for you while I'm standing here. My props. The only person that could have moved my props was me. So here you go. Okay, this is the base of a, pro a fascinator. Okay, it's a headband. And there's a piece of fabric that goes like this. And you put it on top and then you clip one of these on there. And I'm waving it over here because my good friend that I used to dance with, we were divas. We're still divas. And um, this was on one of our costumes, and we didn't wear them. We thought they were silly. Hmm, okay. And so this is how you make a fascinator. And if you had a glue gun here, you'd have this done in two minutes. And um, my sister Nancy, when does, she does shows, and she has one daughter who is the fascinator maker of life. Give her, give her a glue gun and some feathers and she's on a roll. So anyway, this is what, I think this is really beautiful. This is also called a fascinator. And this came from Hats Galore and more over at Peddler's Village. There's, there's some um, <coughs> coupons back there. She, uh, the um, owner of that was here this, after, this morning and she just loved it. I think fascinators are fun, they're easy to make, and you know what? Just think, you get dressed up, you put something on your head, and it's wonderful. I love that. And mm -hmm. look at that color. And they're fun. So, Monica, where should we go from here? Oh, let me surprise you. <laughs> oh, please surprise me, because I think I skipped something. Oh, I know. I, okay, go ahead. Okay. By the way, I bought this hat strictly. I have nothing to match it. I did wear it for my birthday. I just like the hat. So, what? Sure, you know me too well. All righty. Oh, the cloche. Oh, my God, the cloche. Okay. And not to be upstaged. Here we go. Alrighty, uh, woo. and so this is also, this is the time we had a very famous person that lived in Irwino or Upper Black Eddy, and that was Dorothy Parker. And Dorothy Parker was a member of the Algonquin in New York. And they've asked me not to give you some of her, her little quotes. <laughs> and I, ha I hate to tell you, I do know some of her quotes, but that's only after two martinis. <laughs> And that's when my sister drives me home. Okay, so, but this was, this was what, we have used this hat when we've had someone impersonate Dorothy Parker. This is, we call this the Dar Dorothy Parker hat. And so while Monica gets ready to motor on to another <laughs> subject, I'm gonna take this off. Whew. I feel like I'm buried. Okay, and then we have our lovely little red hat here. Is this a hat or is this a fascinator? This is a hat. Now this, this has a real story to it. <sighs> Christine Moore came to Doylestown and was at um, Sadie Rose. 
And then she came, she went up to Jana's shop in the middle of Doylestown. And I knew she was coming and I had an appointment and I took the fabric of a red dress. It was a 1930s pattern, it was Vogue. Um, and the, I was having the dress made. I thought this dress was the living end. My friend who I did a show with said, you're not wearing that dress to introduce my um, show because I don't like it. But okay, whatever you want. And, but I had this hat on, I had it made for the last red ball, Central Box red ball that I ever did. And it was down at our, um, the, the hospital when they opened the new center. And we were opening it down there and there were friends of mine. We had dancers, we had ice sculptures. There was nothing we left go. We had people singing, we had people dancing, we had an orchestra. So I'm standing out front with my friend Michael. Anybody who knows him knows what he was up to. And of course I had this red dress on. I thought I was the living end. And I had red clogs on because I had to stand for an hour and 15 minutes and say hello to all you people. And as they came in, we had to call them by name. I want you to know I love Michael dearly. He doesn't know one person's name, neither do I. So I had the little cheat sheet right here. Uh, it's Mary, it's Mary and Joe. Okay, so they came in and I'm thinking, and then my brother-in-law, who I love, Jojo Ridgway, I love him to death. He comes in and I, I'm all feeling good about my hat, right? I'm thinking, whew. And of course his daughter is dancing. I don't know whether it was one daughter or two. And um, he looks at me and he goes, where's the monkey? I said, I said, what do you mean? You, that looks like you're the organ grinder. Where is the monkey? I wanted to say, this is a car payment on my head. What are you talking about? And we laughed, I mean, and then after that, this is a joke in the family. I still love him. And, the, and if you think I'm an organ grinder, it's okay. It's always a story to tell. Okay, Miss Monica, let's wow him. Another transitional. Ooh, I love when I hear ooh. <laughs> Okay. Somebody got behind me and knocked my hair out. My hair doesn't usually come out, but you know what? There you go. All righty then. All right, so we have gone through the time periods and we talked about the cloches. And somebody at the, in the last group asked if you always t tilted your cloche to one side. Or do, were they made that way? Well, this this cloche was made this way. This tilts to my right side. I have a habit of tilting everything to the right side. So I'll tell you two stories. No, maybe three. Anyway, uh, Walter Deli used to work for town and country players. He um, donated his time and he designed. And he used to say to me, oh, what in? Just like that, cigarettes, you know, the martinis. And he said, never tilt your hat unless it was made to be tilted that way. And I, of course I said, Walter, come on. You know, sometimes you look better, sometimes it looks better. Oh, and Ann, they know what they're doing. Well, I never listened, which is a good thing. But somebody asked me, and I think this one always tilts this way. But I think you just tilt your cloche the way you want to. That's the way it always been. Oh, come on, Monica, bring it in. Menswear on women to me I think is fabulous because we can pull that off. I think women in a tuxedo wearing one of these, fabulous. Don't ask me if I like a woman in a uh, tuxedo. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> All right. Does it smash? No, no it does not. <laughs> what? This one does doesn't. It, this does not smash. Uh, no, I don't. Like a Wait magic a minute. Trick. I think I might have lied to you. There, there might be a one yeah. over here. Oh, that would have been really fun. Yeah. Okay. Ask and you shall receive. Does this one smash? This one smashes. Oh. This one came to t from from Town and Country Blazer. I have. There you go. 
Oh, there we go. Watch the baking soda. And you know the powder inside? I wish I could say it was something mysterious. It's, it's just It's baking. not a precursor to a magic trick, sorry. No, 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 it's baking, <laughs> it's baking soda. It's because, you know, the thing of it is we were asked about boxes. It was with boxes and um, the boxes that you see here, I have acquired over the years. As of about three years ago, they stopped making boxes. And when you find them, especially at an antique shop, they sometimes they have odors to them you do, that, that will penetrate into your hats. So what we use is dry L. They make little tiny ones like this, stick them in the hat, and baking soda. Is it leaking paint and soda? <laughs> Okay, but um, all the, now this is the new, don't anybody tell, I put something on there. This is the new kind of hat box that they give you. It's soft and it, um, it zips and you carry it. It's not my favorite, but it does work and it's a lot easier. Those boxes get kind of heavy, especially when you're going somewhere, you don't know which hat to take. I'm a mood hatter, so there you go. All right, so Miss Monica, are you going, I know what you're going to do. You're up to no good back there. All good. All good. Okay. All right. And here comes our salute. This is my salute to breast cancer. And I have, I bought this and I wear it during breast cancer month. And also I say to people when they say, oh, Linnean, I love that pink. Yes. Pink is always very flattering on 90% of the people in this world and it gives you a good complexion. But we always say, this makes you feel good, a hat makes you feel good, and also take care of your health. Take care of the things that'll make you feel better day after day after day. So, Miss Monica, flaunt your stuff back there. Yes, pink is uplifting. I think pink is a wonderful, especially the spring, you feel like, oh yes, I need some pink. So go for it. Now, I will tell you, I will tell you one thing, um, and I had to check, I always have to check the dates, um, but the 1940s, the Audubon Society um, asked that there be um, strict rules about not using bird feathers, because we were coming out of the 1900s, the Victorian era, they were still taking, they had a hat on, that maybe was the size of this right here. And they had feathers that came down from one side onto your shoulders. And they were doing, you know, not such happy things to those birds. So they, um, and the, in the 19th, uh, they, they asked them to please, 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 please stop it. And they did, they did. So that's why you only see little tiny feathers here and there. Now, I just wanted to point out, mm, how can I point something out if I don't have a hat on? I can't even talk without a hat. Okay, here we go. Up here, as you can see, if you start over here, this is the traditional wedding hat, go to church hat, and that of course is, that would be worn on Easter. All right, and that, oh, I wore that to Monica's wedding. And this hat right here, was um, given to me by a friend that was made strictly for show. It's a Victorian hat. It is it's extremely heavy. I mean, I had it down and I thought, I like these people, but not that much. I mean, it's really heavy and it's stuffed. And of course, right here, we have our salute um, to the war. And we want, and that yellow hat, okay? The story on the yellow hat is um, Fred and Ron, um, came to see me the one time and uh, Fred gave me that. That is Fred's mother's hat from the 1940s, kissing the 50s, and that is a silk rose and that is a beautiful, beautiful straw. And so I've treasured it and I thought that would be very nice. Then right here, this hat right here is the base of it I got at Bontons, and I was over there. I was doing Enchanted April at Town and Country Players, one of my favorite movies, one of my favorite shows. And I dressed everybody. I was very lucky uh, to be able to do the show. And Joe Page, I think some of you know the name from 
uh, was was the matriarch in the show, and her um, I, I, Mary Evelyn did her suit for her and put her in a gray suit. Mary, do you love me or don't you? A gray suit. What am I going to do with a woman? And she's the matriarch, and she went shopping in Italy, and she comes in, and she's got all everybody carrying her bags and hat bags and everything else. You should have seen what we went through to, to get all that together. And she had to wear a big hat. So I find the hat. It was very plain. So I went to get feathers. So my friend goes into Philadelphia. I say to him, you know where the mummers are. I need some feathers. It's a gray suit. Try not to get anything in the you never use orange on stage. Well, I don't know, Nancy, do you use orange on stage? Mm. There you go, there's your answer. And so I said, please bring me some feathers. He calls me and he goes, this man can find anything. There are no feathers because it's time for the mummers. So what are we gonna do? So I went to the, um, I, w I, was at, I was going into a hardware store and I'm looking around and here's a feather duster. That is the end of a feather duster. And then I went to town and country and people have given us wonderful jewelry that we sort and sort. And here's this big pin. You can hardly see it. I can't, I couldn't make it show about like this. And I put it on there. She got an applause when she got on stage. Okay. She didn't even open her mouth, but that for Joe is the way it usually goes. Can Bobby, can Bobby get that down and put it on? Can we see it on? <sighs> Not yet. Okay. Not yet. We'll do the next thing and I'll get... Brianne, do we have Miss, Miss Tall here? Rachel's not here. She's at the Ah. Well, you know what? I will get it down. We'll do the next thing and we'll get it down. And it is also in the limelight this week. This week. Um, Joe is in there from Enchanted April with my hat on there are a few other of my hats that I built and we have also have another show in there and I had built the hat so that's it's been kind of a good week for me but Mo Monica don't you think it's time okay here's a little 1960s into the 70s Aquarius Ruby baby <laughs> floppy hats <laughs> floppy hats never go out of style right. They're always functional, they're always fun, and they're coming back. Yeah, she did, I don't know. Okay, okay, so I don't, um, I can't wear the floppy hat as well, because when I, and I can't take my hair down, don't even think about it. So, um, but this is, uh, this is another flop, this was made for the Red Hat Society, this was given to me. So there you go. All the red hats, okay, Miss. Aquarius. Ooh. All right. So here we are. A little Aquarius. There you go. All righty. So give me a hint there, Miss Monica. I know what you want to do next. I think, yep. Okay. She gave me the signal. I'm going to take this off, and nobody saw, sees me do this, right? No one. Ah, all right. And as you see, we smooth our, ha our hair back because we're used to this. But um, no, I think, and your answer, after this is over, we're gonna get it down for you. The hat, the hat, you wanna see the hat, of course. So what, what I will tell you is many, many, many times, you know, I tell people, if you are gonna go to the beach, if you are gonna go to um, and sit at a pool or something, like, and you wanna cover your head up, ball cap, but make sure when you greet somebody that you know really well, or that somebody knew, look in their eyes. Tilt that, that, hat, that hat backwards, because too many times people hide underneath them. Well, you know I don't hide from anything. I mean, we got that. So um, let me just, while she's warming up, let me tell you about not hiding. Do you want to know where this came from? This came from Vegas. And we've used it in only two shows at Town & Country. I'm very, very possessive of this. This has very fun memories. 
and I'm going to pull this down like this, and I just want to tell you, my, there was a friend of mine who used to say, oh, she can't come to your house because she can, she can only turn left <laughs> while driving. And this, and this hat came from Vegas. This did. I was in Vegas, and you know what? I had a husband. I really, really did, okay? And I was with him. Mm, naughty boy. And so he was, and he was gambling, so I took the money out of his pocket, and I bought this hat. And on the way home, he said, have I ever seen that before? I said, this old thing? Okay, there you go. <laughs> so, so anyway, this hat has done two shows. I'm Annie, I know Annie, and one other show, and I just have it, and if you ever have a white hat like this, you have to use cornstarch and baking powder and baby powder, and you've got to rub it really, really well. That made the rounds at my wedding reception. <gasps> I forgot the wedding. Yeah. Oh my God, I had this on for Debbie's wedding. And we have a picture of all the men in it. Just about, yeah, my father and quite a few of the other. Thank <laughs> you. But I'm gonna do this because That's you- the way they all do. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. So anyway, <laughs> oh, I forgot about your wedding. What a wonderful thing. So there you go. I don't know, do I have the hat I wore to your wedding here on the table? Um, How could you remember? I don't remember the one you wore to the wedding. This was wedding reception. That was wedding reception, and then there's one that I will never forget that is sitting right up in front of me. Oh, the, oh yes, oh, yes, please, 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 please. <laughs> then we'll get to that one. All righty. And actually, when Monica got married, I wore that to the Our Lady of Mount Carmel, and I wore this hat, which I'll put on later, and that to the reception. So you got to change your hat, as I said. You wore the black one. What? Right there? Right here? That one. Yeah, the wedding. Yeah. But um, I will tell you that uh, we're going back to what do you do with hats, and the slouch hat is right here. This is my example of a slouch hat. I don't have a lot of bucket hats, because when I put bucket hats on, it just reminds fond memories of my father, little kids and things like that. He loved a bucket hat. But anyway, this is the bucket hat. <laughs> and then we can do this and it's much better and by the way I wore no hats this week I went to the Acme and they said to me Lynn where's your hat and when I walk in Doylestown I have people that you know they work outside in Doylestown they come by me they're on their porches when I used to walk in the morning and they'd say I like the one yesterday better. And I'd say, okay. So, come on, Monica, come on out here and show, some, show me some hats. Gee up, everybody. <laughs> the old American cowboy hat. Your traditional, thank you, ma'am. Your very serious one. Don't want to mess with me today. And then, your ever feminine version. Great for gardening, functional, fun, and very comfortable. I actually do wear this, I do. And I don't garden, but I do wear it. <laughs> I'm gonna put this on today because this is one of my favorite hats because I take this away on way, and I will do this. Thank you, see you tomorrow for lunch. Don't miss lunch. And this is how you roll it up, okay? And you can go like this in your, okay? And it pops right back out. And um, I love this because I can go to the beach, don't bother me, I'm taking a nap. <laughs> Get those children away from me, they're getting sand on me, and I can turn it up like this and I can wear it, or I can go to a party, a pool party and I can drink my martini from this side and snub people on the other side, you know? There you go. So I think right now um, I would like to do a few other hats and cover a little more material. Right over here we have, I made this fascinator. This was the last cocktails, traditional cocktails at the, at the um, castle. And there's a scarf here that I wore on a black dress. And that is so much fun. 
This hat right here I bought because of the color, and I'll tr tell you the truth, I don't really care for it because it doesn't, it doesn't look terrific on me. It just looks okay. I don't do okay. Oh, please. <laughs> anyway, so, okay. Mon, I think, what do you think? How we, oh, do you I want think, to try to get that gray one down? Do you think you can reach up there? You know what it has underneath it? It just has a box. So you won't get hit in the head. Oh, yay. Go ahead, put it on. I just got off the Titanic. I'll let you all and see this. They, yes, they, as Lynn said, yes, from a feather duster. In the pen. This is one of your best, Lynn I'm sorry. Yeah. Just take it around and use a clip like you're a hairdresser. Put the clip in and then you either sew it or use it. Yeah. If it's not a good, if it's for the stage, I use a glue gun. <laughs> and when nobody's looking, I use a glue gun. Yeah, and other it, times I take it and stitch it, it on. It fits well. Yep. But it has to be balanced. It's a trick. Yes. Mm -hmm. I've never seen yep. dust now, when she's done there, oh good, keep talking. I, me a break. You know, <laughs> you may want to ask her that. That's an excellent question. Lynn, we have a question. Yes. I've never seen feather duster that had those colors. Did you die? No. No. No, and I want to tell you so desperately where I was. And I wasn't over in um, Lambertville at the famous uh, hardware store over there. I was somewhere. I want to say Ace is the place. <laughs> no, I'm very serious. And I had never seen it, but I was so focused on gray because <sighs> Mary said to me, Mary Evelyn, who I adore, and she said to me, oh, please, Lynn don't have the hat take away from my dress. Yeah. Really? <laughs> Who are you talking to? <laughs> Who's going to listen to you? You know, so what I did was, and I was not, I was in charge of costumes and hats, and I decorated the set because um, Jim Kirkwood was directing. And, well, we won't say anything, but... You know, we could steer Jim a lot of different ways. So last but not least, because we want to come down the home stretch, we have not talked about Jackie Kennedy's pillbox. This is a pillbox. And my dear friend who sent this in the mail to me, because I said to her, I don't have a pillbox. So she went home and found a pillbox pill for me and sent it to me. So I'm going to do this for you. What they did was, I don't, okay. Um, I'm going to turn around so you can get the full effect. This is when I'm going to church <laughs> on Court Street. This is when I'm going to Our Lady of Mount Carmel. And this is when I want to say, look at me, I'm here. Okay? <laughs> There's your three things. Now, also with the pillbox, because I know, I was hairdressing then, when um, Jackie Kennedy, we had to do a page boy fluff, okay, with it, an Italian top, two rollers, one dip on each side, three rollers here, and seven across the back and two at the bottom. Yellow, yellow, green, yellow. Right, Patty? Yeah. My cousin Patty's here today, and she's a hairdresser too. We've been doing hair so long, Jackie Kennedy came in and we were like, oh really? Okay, here we go again. And then there was the Farrah Fawcett blown back, but we won't go down that road because you get tired. But this is, there's a whole system. What they had was hats to match people's hair. And now we're very casual. We, we, we don't wear hats. Some people like them, so you wear them for fun. So I am going to do, would you, like to, would you like to put on your last hat? And I will put mine on and we'll tell you all about them.
Okay. All righty. Now, this hat was bought, I can tell you, this was 19, um, about 1984, and I bought this because I was chairing the um, black tie um, dinner dance <coughs> for AIDS, and we had it at the Warrington Country Club, and by the way, we had a Northeaster, so I just, just you know, I just want to give you everything. <laughs> And the person who was doing the flowers was my friend. She was wonderful with flowers. She had a whole basement full of flowers, and she wound up in bed horizontal. So we called all the chairmen of all the tables, and um, most of them being gentlemen that had lots of talent, and we had a contest who could design their, the best table, and that's how we did it. But I wore this, and I've had it ever since then. It only comes out for auspicious occasions, Today's an auspicious occasion. So with that said, come on, Monica, bring us in. This is an English riding hat. I've always loved English riding hats. And for my wedding reception, I wore this hat. At church, I wore a traditional veil. And for the reception, I wore this. The creation of this, the, the process, was so delightful. She's a local woman, and going to her home, she knew and understood what my vision was. We selected the color of the straw. She knew my color scheme. We experimented with it. I wanted some beiges and some creams. And then just to play with the adornment was delightful. And looking at her array of jewels, and we just played with it. And I wanted a of feathers, so I got my of feathers, just enough. And believe me, it, was, it is so comfortable. And I danced with it, perhaps not within the etiquette of what should be happening, but it was my reception. I can do what I want. <laughs> so this is my reception wedding hat. And um, I always wanted one. So I think um, it was just something I'd always wanted, and I loved wearing it. And I'm happy to share it with you. And Mary Ann Croach has made, um, this, the woman made no, like three, champagne. four hats for me. I have like them up here. Blings. And by the way, like any ha anything in Bucks County heavy. that is not made in Bucks County cannot go to the October. museum. So I do have four hats that I can vo verify change, it was made mm -hmm. here, made by an artist here. Because well, my sisters are sitting over there going, could somebody, every one of you take a hat home so we don't have to be left? When she dies, what are we going to do this? You know. So last but not least, I love Monica's hat. And I'm going to put this on. And I, I forgot that my little Debbie's in the first row. And there's, we have a lot of stories about this hat. But anyway, this is one of my favorites. And um, this is a muff. Now this muff has a little has a little wallet inside of it. Uh, that's then you got to pay. And these are idea. our grandmother's um, leather gloves that I haven't lost one of. Okay, I'm very proud because I put them on my lap and then I get out of the car. So. Someone said to Monica in the last one, what was the song that you would sing? People have always said to me, can't you sing? And this was, thank you very much. Of course I can't. I'm really open about that. But I was, this, I was in Chicago one night. I was with friends and I had this hat on and there was a, a soloist and a piano player and I had my muff and she sang, don't rain on my parade. And she looked at me and I took the hat up and I put it on her head and there was a bucket of roses there. I stuck them in her hand and she sang right like she was on the, on the tugboat and it was just wonderful. So this is like one of my signet hats and I love it. And to all of you, let me just say one thing. So to the answer, of, the answer to Mr. Somheim's question, yes, Mr. Somheim, we do wear hats. Thank you. Travel safe. It has been my pleasure. Yes, absolutely. Because people had to take their hats and come home and redo their hair. Yes, absolutely. Now, is there any Q&A questions you would like to ask me? Yes, Mom. There was a hat. I think there was that one over there that you said you put baking soda and powder and all on it. 
yeah, and that was the, 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 to, to, to take to take the um, smell of the mold out of it because it was it was in with hats and they got moldy. It does work. I put them out on my screened in porch this winter and the air cleared it right up. So Miss Kimmy, are you yakking back there? What do you want to ask me? Nothing, nothing so thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Is it polite to ask him to remove it? They should know. If you wear a hat to the theater, it is your obligation as a human being to take it off. I have seen people ask me to take my hat off. It depends whether I'm in a good mood or a bad mood. I try to be the good, <laughs> the good sister instead of the bad sister. I turn around to them and say, Madam, if I didn't know hat etiquette, I would not have this on in a the theater. I always take it off. But you do not re remove your hat until the orchestra leader stands up, raises his hands up like this, you take your hat off. That's, you don't have to take it off before that. I did learn that, but I have to tell you, back there where there's some white, there is a real gold leather hat that was given to me, a wild and crazy woman that once came through my life. She gave me that, and the sides were out. They kind of looked like horns sticking out, and I tucked them under, and um, I had that on for, I had that on for Lacage in Philadelphia. And a couple of the gentlemen, they did splits in front of me, and one of them says to me, "What else do I have to do to get that hat?" <laughs> so oh, I treasure that. That was made in 19, about 1981. No, I'm sorry, 1961. A lovely gentleman named Frank Gallagher, when his wife passed away, Jeanette. I went down to the house, and this is Jeanette's, all of Jeanette's house hats. They're right here, and I am saluting her today. We didn't put them on. She had a very petite head. This would be very, for a very tiny head. She wore these back and forth to, to Philadelphia all the time. So I just wanted you to know, um, I, I'm amiss at not telling you earlier, these are all Jeanette's hats. She has just passed away. Oh, please. Drive safely, go home, wear a hat, and put a smile on somebody's face. Buy yourself a hat. You'll feel confident and beautiful.